Hello folks, Wiley here. Today is the first day of June 2021, I think. I've lost the year in the past year, apparently. Um, today, I'm going to teach you a little bit, of, or talk to you a little bit about learning to draw from your imagination. And uh, just a quick, before I get into that, a quick demo here and, and why learning to draw from your imagination is important. And we take a pen and we do a scribble like that. That's just pure out of the subconscious, whatever it is you want to do kind of drawing. But if you have to copy something, if you have to copy a photograph, we're going to use this as our photograph. I'm going to sit here and attempt to make a copy. And as you can quickly ascertain, hey, I used a big word today. Very good start for the day. Must be the extra coffee. You can see that it's, it's kind of challenging to make the same movements. I've done an okay job, but you can see this is the original. This is the copy. And just the same as if you were copying a, a photograph, you know, the, the uh, copy itself is very challenging. If you think this is not true, for example, go, go look at a Van Gogh painting and you say to yourself, yeah, I, I can do that. I mean, a child could do that. And then go ahead and try and do it. And you'll find that you can't do it without an extreme lot of practice because his work, his work, for example, is extremely spontaneous, overexcited, dive right in, no copying, just take from nature and, and go for it. All right. So my argument, my discussion is whatever you want to call it. My persuasion is that you, you need to learn to draw from your instincts, your um, your insights, your own imagination. So here's a quick color pencil drawing I did on some sort of gray toned paper. It's just a scribbly moonscape with a, you know, a, a tree hanging on to just a few leaves and so on. Um, when you get far away from this, it blurs out and becomes somewhat impressionistic. But as you can see, going close up, it's just a bunch of scribbly lines. So let's see, moving on from that, we come to this one. And that is a more recent one. I, I think this is actually a colored pencil on a sort of a pink gray paper, allowing the, the pink of the paper to come through and become part of the coloration of the picture. All right, so let's see, what do we got next? Um, cloudscape, just a quick study of clouds. And the reason I do things like this is I wanna be able to draw from, from my own thoughts but sometimes you need to practice and go out there and observe and look at the clouds, look at the trees, the leaves, the grasses, the bushes, all that stuff. And practice it. Here's just a quick black and white scribbly pencil drawing. Again, clouds, just trying to compose a picture from my own mind. Um, and speaking of practice, here's one I did, uh, just trying to get a feel for leaf shapes and colors in the fall. And what do we got? All right, and then I frequently sit down, and, and again, this is from my my imag imagination, or you could even say it's from my memory, having looked at trees and studied so many trees over the years. This is apparently an apple tree, because I do see I have a little red apple in there. And this, again, is on some sort of um, toned tan paper. Again, uh, looking for that, that scruffy pine tree that you see on the eastern shore of Maryland. Here I've you know, trying to get that sort of decimated look that it gets when it's been bitten and chewed up by the sand and the wind and the rain. And and uh, you get that sort of uh, forlorn look that you get on trees of that type. Another example of the same sort of thing, only a different type of tree. All right, you can see that I try to capture the nature of the tree in that it's alive at the bottom and, and kind of spilling at the top where it has new growth. Um, and as these trees age, and I'm not discerning necessarily between cedars and, and evergreens and pine versus uh, this and that. Uh, I'm just doing some sort of an uh, iconistic memory picture of a particular type of tree. You can see the limbs droop as they age. Here is one on a nice dark gray paper. I only used um, a black ink Pentel marker, I think it was, a really fine line like an India ink marker. And then white um, white charcoal. There might be a little bit of blue in the sky in the background. 
I did this quite a while ago. So I, I'm uh, trying to remember, but you know, that's, that's what it looks like I used. Another one, just a uh, colored pencil on uh, a blue-gray toned paper. Trying to get that yellow in the background, give me some some evening, uh, some evening light that's going away. Here's one. I really kind of like this one. Uh, I was painting a few years ago, doing a lot of outdoor plein air at a, at a place had about thirty or forty acres and had an amazing pine forest, and, and I did a lot of painting of that forest. And then when I came back and tried to do it from my imagination, here is what I came up with. And this again is on a brown, a really dark gray brown paper where I've used or allowed the, the color of the paper to become part of the overall color of the, of the drawing. And I've used, um, looks like green and uh, burnt sienna and burnt umber colored pencils. And then I've highlighted the sky with um, white charcoal and I see in the distance in this lower area here that I've used some sort of lavender or light purple marker. And this is just some scribbly thing trying to do a ravine like we have so many of these in the in the Patapsco River Valley in, in which I live and this is just trying to get that that landscape that you know, you know steep ravines that we get and all the dead pine trees, etc. etc. Right, here's I guess this is a more recent one. And here again, I'm just trying to compose a scene which which might eventually become an oil painting, something that's soothing. And you know, I've got my clouds and trees and foreground, and it's all just very suggestive, very expressionistic, very impressionistic. I think I used both of the, those words. And it's just, you know, trying to capture an idea. And this one I just did about a week ago. Uh, this is a, you know, a more intense colored pencil drawing. And um, let's see. Used just about every color there is, didn't I? Had some fun with it. This is on a, a cream colored paper. And then let's see what else I've got here. I've got one more, I think. And here we go, trying to do a little afternoon sun scene. And I, I think I'll probably definitely make this one into a painting or in combination with the, the two previous ones. And, and, uh, but again, I just sit down and, and try to do that light and dark and that far away bright and that close up cool color. And um, again, just sitting there making it up as I go. So please try it yourself. Go out, walk in the woods, look at nature, observe the trees and leave and the structure and the bark and the, and the lay of the land. And then go home to your amazing studio, which you must all have by now. And, and just let it go. Color pencils, watercolor, whatever. But uh, I tend, in this case, to be promoting the idea of drawing. So have at it. Thanks for watching. And uh, in part two, I'll go ahead and do a demonstration of this. But here is just something to get you going. And uh, we'll see you.